Hi, Vessels. I want to uh, share with you a portion within the Holy Courtyard of Worship painting uh, from the Soundboard Art Collection. This painting is so significant. It is a, it is a painting that I believe, well, I know, has captured within it uh, the power and purpose of worship according to God's heart. There are secrets and mysteries within this painting that have been poured out from heaven for such a time as this. And I want to share with you all um, about the worshiper who is captured as the centerpiece of this painting. And within the painting, the worshiper, not only is she wearing very uniquely the armor of God, but if you look down towards her feet, I captured her foot literally shod with the preparation of the gospel. Now, for those of you who do not know, a major part of the armor of God is that your feet is literally wearing the preparation of the gospel, that your footsteps are marked by the instruction of the gospel of the Bible. And what now is painting this painting, it's important for you to understand that it was up outpouring and I was flowing having never painting uh, have painted a full collection before having never really ever painted seriously before this was um, not something that I intentionally uh, captured the paintings the 12 collections the 12 12 by 12 paintings that were poured out to me um, from heaven this collection of the soundboard a reflection of what heaven is saying was not an intentional collection where I knew exactly what I was painting in fact I wasn't even sure if I could draw such detail such specificity of the vision that God was giving me but the miraculous gift of the Holy Spirit came upon me and I was able to capture 12 unique paintings that are truly a revelation of God's heart in this time and in this season. But the worshiper, her foot marked out a specific page within the Bible. And I, wanna, I want to uh, just discuss that for, for, for right now. The book Nahum was, was, was what the Holy Spirit impressed on me to um, paint where her foot is. And what's so significant about that, Nahum is not a book of the Bible that I was even familiar with. And so I painted that on good faith, not even knowing what the scriptures were talking about, not even knowing what God was speaking in that particular moment or the prophets in that particular moment within the scriptures. And it wasn't until after I completed the painting that I began to read Nahum 1 and I was blown away by the direct correlation of what the picture was capturing and what Nahum 1 speaks about. So let's go to the book of Nahum and let's read what Nahum 1 is saying. As you can look at the painting and imagine what God may have been revealing or saying um, in your own way. What are you seeing? So the book of Nahum 1 begins like this. A prophecy concerning Nineveh. The book of the vision of Nahum the Elkoshite. The Lord's anger against Nineveh. The Lord is jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and vents his wrath against his enemy. The Lord is slow to anger but great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm are, and the storm and clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and dries it up. 
He makes all the rivers run dry. Bashan and Carmel wither, and the blossoms of Lebanon fade. The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt away. The earth trembles at his presence, the world and all who live in it. Who can withstand his indignation? Who can endure his fierce anger? His wrath is poured out like fire. The rocks are shattered before him. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. But with an overwhelming flood, he will make an end of Nineveh. He will pursue his foes into the realm of darkness. Whatever they plot against the Lord, he will bring it to an end. Trouble will not come a second time. They will be entangled among thorns and drunk from their wine, and they will be consumed like dry stubble. From you, Nineveh, has one come forth who plots evil against the Lord and devises wicked plans. This is what the Lord says. Although they have allies and are numerous, they will be destroyed and pass away. Although I have afflicted you, Judah, I will afflict you no more. Now will I break their yoke from your neck and tear your shackles away. The Lord has given a command concerning you, Nineveh. You will have no descendants to bear your name. I will destroy the images and the idols that are in the temple of your gods. I will prepare your grave for you are vile. Look, there on the mountains, the feet of one who brings good news, who proclaims peace. Celebrate your festivals, Judah. And fulfill your vows. No more will the wicked invade you. They will be completely destroyed. That is the ending of Nahum 1. What's so significant is that if you have been following along of the soundboard concerning this particular painting, I have been speaking what the Lord has been saying to me about this being a time of recompense and freedom. A time that those who have suffered for a while, God will make them perfect and establish them. I believe that this is what the painting is revealing and what God is saying. Peace.